Okay, let's talk about DLSS4 next, as at this point the 5070 needs all the ammo it can get to fight off the outgoing 4070 Super. And of course there's this, Nvidia telling the world that 5070 can offer 4090 performance. That means DLSS4 multi-frame generation, and that's already a bit of a house of cards for Nvidia bearing in mind prior results in like-for-like -like testing on much more capable Blackwell cards. The FPS can match and indeed exceed 4090, but latency definitely cannot. But continuing on with our prior 50 series tests, let's begin with Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K with RT Overdrive. I'm going to skip the native resolution testing because, well, RT Overdrive needs uh, DLSS Super Resolution, uh, where we have a 40 FPS average with a 51 millisecond latency. 4X multi-frame gen takes us up to 122 frames per second, which is nice, but PC latency rises up to 72 milliseconds, so a 21 millisecond deficit up against super resolution. That's moving somewhat into my perception that something doesn't quite feel right in the controls versus the frame rate that I'm seeing on screen. But let's be clear here, it is still playable, especially with a controller. Up against the 1490, however, running with 2x frame gen, 4x MFG on the 5070, well, it offers 96% of 1490 frame rate. But yeah, the PC latency at 72 milliseconds is 33 milliseconds higher than 1490. So again, I can't honestly call this ballpark 1490 performance. Cyberpunk base latency isn't so bad though, so it's a good basis for using multi-frame generation, but Alan Wake 2 is problematic. Cyberpunk base latency isn't so bad, but Alan Wake 2 is problematic. The benchmark here gives us a 24 frames per second frame rate with just DLSS super resolution along with a 114 millisecond latency. 4x MFG gives us a 3.35x frame rate uplift, but average latency in the benchmark here is 146 milliseconds, and this is not great. Base latency before MFG is just too high. Switching to 4090 comparisons, 4x MFG on 5070 can only deliver 90% of 4090's frame rate with 2x frame gen, but it's the lag that's the killer. A 67 millisecond average on 4090 is already relatively high, and having already established a 4x MFG latency of 146 milliseconds on 5070, that's a 79 millisecond penalty. Not great not really comparable to 4090, despite what the frame rate numbers might say. So the 4090 performance claims are, from my perspective, dead in the water really, but that's not to say that you can't use multi-frame generation with 5070 with good results. By dropping to 1440p, which, let's face facts, is a better match for the 5070, and using Alan Wake 2 with high rasterization settings and low RT with direct lighting active, I had a pretty good time actually, even in really heavy areas of the game, like this one. And with the DLSS in Transformer model mode, at the balance settings with 3x MFG, I achieved an experience that would be a great fit for a high refresh rate 1440p screen. I used 3x MFG here instead of 4x and dialed back settings in order to claw back as many milliseconds as I could in terms of PC latency. At 4x, it's weird. There isn't actually a huge boost to latency, but I could start to feel the controls as being a touch more sluggish. And since frame rate was already high anyway, I stuck to 3x MFG. Average latency across all of my gameplay in this clip uh, came into about 53 milliseconds, significantly better than the maxed experience on 4090 at 4K. So yeah, tweaking settings can definitely improve the experience, right? certainly in latency terms, even if you are losing some of the bling. I chose a similar strategy for playing Cyberpunk 2077 with RT Overdrive. DLSS again um, at 3x multi-frame gen mode with balanced super resolution settings using the Transformer model. With average PC latency at 45 milliseconds, I probably could have pushed further, but the experience felt good and looked great. What's kind of nice here is that with both Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk, a $550 GPU is providing a transformative experience compared to consoles, even PS5 Pro. DLSS 4 
and uh, higher level raid facing are playing a big part in that, of course. And as long as settings are judiciously chosen, uh, multi-frame generation technology works well. So features are important then, and Nvidia is pulling ahead of the competition even as they are starting to catch up in terms of prior generation NVIDIA features. Um, Transformer model DLSS super resolution, well, that's a game changer. And in a world where high refresh rate monitors are only getting more and more popular, multi-frame generation definitely has a role to play. But ultimately, pure performance from the hardware. Well, it seems to be the case that as new Blackwell cards appear, the gains versus 40 series refresh are diminishing to almost nothing. And that's not good. Regressions gen on gen, that's actually really bad. I mean, we saw it before to a certain extent with 4060 Ti versus 3060 Ti, but that was mostly on 4K max settings or other scenarios ill-suited to that level of card. But here there are scenarios where 4070 Super can beat 5070 at 1440p or even 1080p, and that's more than a bit troubling especially when we test relatively fewer games than many other outlets. So I would expect to see more of these regressions when you take a look at other reviews from other channels.